You are not going to plant a tomato seed and get a cucumber. Let's talk about what you've been harvesting. A small acorn has the potential to create an oak tree 150 feet tall and 90 feet wide. I'm your host, Eric Brown, and with me, Mr. Mike Jones. Hey, man, what's going on, man? Oh, man, I'm ready to harvest this up. And you know how this. small an acorn is, bro? So small. And you said it produces an oak tree over 150 feet? That small acorn planted creates that. I got to know this. Y'all got to know this. Within you is the potential to create the exact same awesomeness as that little bitty acorn. Within you is the potential to live a life as large as that oak, that oak tree. 150 feet tall, a crown of over 90 feet. That potential is within you. But my question to you today, what are you harvesting? I, I read a story of a farmer. Dude went out and built a chicken coop, man. And, and he built this chicken coop because he wanted to harvest some eggs. For some strange reason, every morning he went out to the chicken coop, he harvested the chicken shit and not the eggs. Where in your life are you harvesting the shit that is going on in your life and connecting to the shit that's going on in the world rather than going for the thing that you really, really want. Because I tell you, there is a difference between harvesting the shit and harvesting the resources that are available to you to live the life that you want. So Mike, I've heard you say that energy and action follows thought. So what you think about, you are creating your own reality. So why would anyone focus on harvesting the shit? I, you know, Eric, I don't know the answer to that. But what I would say to you is when you think about planting a thought seed, people who plant negative thought seeds are going to harvest negative results and realities. People who plant Positive thought seeds are going to harvest positive thoughts and positive realities. So if you are telling people what you don't want, what are you going to harvest? Exactly what you don't want. So, so why would you keep doing that? So stop and think about it for a moment. I, I was teaching at a bookstore, a Barnes & Noble, after I had written a book on parenting. And what I was teaching these parents is that you should stop teaching your kids what not to do. You should never use the word don't with your children because what you are creating is a fear-based human being that is going to live their life focused on what they are afraid of, a positive, possible negative consequences. So a parent stood up and asked me, so what exactly should we be saying to them versus don't run across the street. What should I be teaching my kid? So I need y'all to hear me because I want you to think about this from a broader perspective than the story I'm about to tell because in your life, whether you're talking about your significant other, your children, or the people at work where you are communicating what you don't want or what they should not do and rather than teaching them what to do and telling them what you do want. So here we go. Kid crossing the street. This is how I taught my four boys. Walk up to the curb. Look both ways. When the street is clear, and I identified what I meant by clear, there are no cars coming from either direction. I want you with a sense of urgency to cross over the street to the other side. Now, what I built in them is the self-confidence to go stand boldly at that curve, look both ways, and have the courage to cross that street and the self-confidence to cross that street with urgency. They got to the exact same outcome 
that your kid did. However, they did it with confidence. They didn't do it out of fear that they were going to get run over and mangled and killed. So those words do matter. And focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want sets them up for success. Absolutely. And I'm saying to you, deliberately plant some thought seeds, positive thought seeds. Focus on what you want. Plant a thought seed of how they can feel worthy of all of the things that the world has in store for them if they truly believe in themselves. Plant a thought seed that allows them to celebrate themselves rather than waiting for somebody else to celebrate them. Plant a thought seed in yourself to catch yourself doing things right and catching other people doing things right. So think about all of the positive thought seeds that you can plant and look at all of the positive things that you will harvest as a result. So rather than going out and harvesting the shit, harvest some positive things that are going to create some positive attributes and talents and habits that are going to allow you to truly live your best life. So if I've gone out and I've planted all of these positive thought seeds and I still don't reach what I want or I'm not able to harvest what I'm after, what do I do? Well, see, that thought seed that you just planted right there, Eric, I'm going to eradicate that one from the ground. First of all, I am not going to focus on what if it doesn't work. Those what if thought seeds are the things that create an imminent failure because you're focused on all of the things that could possibly go wrong. Why would you continue to plant thought seeds that are going to create doubt and apprehension? What I'm saying to you is eradicate that thought seed. Focus on what you want. Plant the seed that you want to harvest that particular thing from. A thought seed of self-confidence. Plant that seed when it absolutely creates a likeness of itself, then you can harvest self-confidence. Plant a thought seed of positivity when it produces a likeness of itself, because every seed is going to produce a likeness of itself. When I intro this, I said, you can't plant a tomato seed and get a cucumber, baby. You plant a tomato seed, you're going to get a tomato. That's exactly whatever goes in is exactly what's going to come out. Well, you heard it here first on the edge from Mike Jones. Absolutely, baby. And I'm going to plant a thought seed right now. Get out on that edge, baby, because if you are not living your life on the edge, you are taking up far too much room. Here we go now.